G'day fellas and welcome to an Outback Octagon 2 pre-release video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new rules of Outback Octagon 2. We're going to be going over the players for Outback Octagon 2. Most importantly, I'm here to hype you up with just a little bit from a phone call that I had earlier today. Hello? I have just one question for you. Are you ready? Am I ready for what? Who's this? Are you ready for this Saturday night where Outback Octagon champ Poppy Paw defends his title in the Aussie Drongo Outback Octagon 2? Right now, you can watch this awesome MMA event live over on Twitch. I'm sorry, no, there is not any chance in hell that we're ever going to have an octagon in this house again. But thank you, but no. Have a good day. Hello? And goodbye to anybody standing in Poppy Paw's way. We've got Beastie Cutie, Marine Lord, The Viper, Lucifer, Vortex, The Muslim, Way of Recon, Capoch, Casper, B, and so many more this Saturday and Sunday. Join the Octagon, be here. Well, there you guys go. That is it. That's the little bit of a hype for you in the beginning. Uh, we, we've, we've just got an old video here playing so let's dive into it of course we'll get some music on in the background so we're not so lonely this right here this is your champion puppy paw he is coming in to outback octagon to hot as the favorite but there are challenges amongst them watch out because next up we've got the viper he is playing he will be playing in the outback octagon number two in addition to the viper we've got beastie cutie just coming off a fresh championship victory in Golden League 2. Currently the world's best player. But keep in mind, there's Marine Lord, who is going to be waiting in the wings to see if he can take out any of those enemies. Don't forget about the two brothers. We've got Lucifron and Vortex making a return to the Octagon. And they're going to be looking to take down some more brothers, I suspect. As not only do we have Wham, we have the Muslim, who doesn't, isn't actually a brother, but... He's, he's the Muslim. He's the Muslim. He's coming back. He decided, you know what? We're back this year. We're doing it. So Demu's coming back in. Wham is coming back in as well. Look at that beautifully cropped picture of Wham right there. That's the best I could get for him. We've got Recon. Another wonderfully cropped picture right there. We've got Kapoach. We've got Casper. We've got B. We've got the best players in the world. And just to round out all those players, I might, I might throw them around just so that you guys know the rest of them. We've got Symptom, Matiz, Give You Anxiety, Don Arty, Crackity here, Salami, Snooper, Core, Blade55555, Louis MT, Averly, Faye, Kaup, State, Divine, Zerton, Striker, Anatand, Sass, and Urk. That is the 32 players. It is an absolutely stacked lineup. Hopefully, I haven't missed anybody. Um, I'd, I'd have, I'd have, I'll have to double check uh, a little bit later. Um, but. Uh, Hold on, I can just do the math right now. Carry the one. I think we're good. I think that's all of it. So let's go over the rules now. Uh, if you are looking to play the Outback Octagon or you want to dive in, what you can actually do is go in and download the mod. Uh, so if you just type up here, Outback Octagon, uh, it will actually take you through. Uh, but obviously, you know, it, 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 it's a bit tough having to find people to play and all that kind of stuff. And it takes a little bit of time to... To, to search and find obviously I've, yeah, I've got pretty quick internet but even that it's not fast enough uh but there you go there you go uh outback octagon 2 right here uh so th this right here uh is the the mod that we're going to be using so let's go through the rules so outback octagon 2 pits 32 of the world's best players in a free-for-all tournament taking place over five weeks through april and may 2023 players will initially be split into four groups of eight from there the opponents for each player will change as the swiss system begins to form a hierarchy of players so we've got four weeks of Swiss and then one final stage. Invitations are exclusive. It is an invitation event. There is no tryouts for this event. It is just based on your ATR ranking together with existing standing within the Age of Empires 4 community. Casting guidelines, don't worry about that. Scoring, points are awarded to the winner of each game. Points are awarded for eliminating an enemy king and extra points are awarded to the player who eliminates an enemy king first, also known as first blood. The way it works, we've got four points awarded to the winner for every single game. You get a point for killing a king. You also get two points for killing the first king. Now that doesn't mean you get three points, that just means you get double points on the first kill. 
in the event that you win with a sacred site or a wonder, the way it's going to work is there's an additional point for every enemy player alive when the counter started. So, as an example, let's say there's five players alive. You build a wonder, and one of the other players kills another one of the players, because maybe they want the population, or maybe they want the point. So now there's only four players left. That means that you're still going to get that extra point if you win, despite that player being dead. Because they were alive at the time that the lamb or the, at the, that the wonder was complete. Now, what's interesting is there's a bit of a dynamic there. If you go for a sacred victory, you can actually say, well, I'm going to go for a sacred victory, but I'm also going to try and kill one of my enemies. And then that way you can kind of get double points. It's a little bit weird, but imagine, right, like there's there's five people left, okay? And so you you go and you, you build your wonder and you're defending against four of the people and then you kill one of them. You're still going to get the points when you win. It's, it's, it's a bit weird. Maybe we should probably look at changing that just to avoid that happening because I'd hate to think that... You know what? If, if you can manage to, to hold on like 2v1 or 3v1 and still kill somebody or snipe their king, mad respect, bro. Get, the, get those double points. So points can be deducted from any player deemed secretly colluding by the tournament admin. Um, so colluding is off the table. You guys will remember from Outback Octagon number one that colluding was allowed, encouraged. It was all about backstabbing and all that. It's completely changed. This year, completely changed. No colluding allowed whatsoever, except if it's overt, meaning if it's in the game, if it's in the Twitch chat, or in, in the chat rather, then it's fine. So let's take a look at the game mode. Outback Octagon 2 games are to be played on the Outback Octagon 2 mod. The mod implements a number of new mechanics, including Nomad spawn with three vills, a king that also spawns that if killed causes the player to be eliminated, a three minute treaty at the beginning of the game. Upon elimina elimination, an enemy king, uh, the player is awarded an additional 50 max population. Landmark elimination is disabled, so it, you don't feel tied down to your landmarks. Uh, Sacred victory and wonder victory are enabled. Stone walls disabled, dark age, feudal age, castle age and imperial age, they are enabled. And stone wall towers are completely disabled for anybody wondering why. They are absolutely busted because they get access to boiling oil. Uh, and that makes them really good. Uh, and in place, emplacements cost twice as much except for the Mongols. So the Mongols don't have to pay double. Um, prize distribution, we've gone for what's called a very flat prize pool. Everybody gets a participation prize for turning up. And at the same time, the guy who comes first doesn't really get that much more than everybody else. And this is a way to encourage sportsmanship because at the end of the day, look, it's a lot of money that we're still talking about here, but it's not like it's $10,000 versus nothing right so everybody's going to walk home with a prize and i think that's important that we we make sure that everybody is getting a little bit of love now in addition to that there's also going to be five special categories where additional prizes are awarded the best sacred site defense the best wonder defense the best king snipe the best comeback and the best clutch moment five thousand dollars of additional prizes paid out to those players uh, and this will be done by a a a court if you will of judges uh, who will determine so rules Trading with the markets of players who are still alive is strictly forbidden. You can, however, trade with the market of an eliminated player or with a neutral trading post. Players must select their sieve as random and must select their team as no team, and the game must be played on the Outback Octagon 2 mod. No civilization rerolls are allowed. No bad spawn rerolls are allowed. In the event of a sync error, players will be required to play the same civilization. Uh, cheating. Um, so cheating or hacking is not allowed under any circumstances. This is just a very broad rule. I'm not going to go over it, but don't cheat. Collusion. Under no circumstances are players permitted to coordinate prior to a game starting. Players are permitted to publicly collude when there is a mutual threat, such as a sacred site victory attempt or a wonder victory attempt or a runaway player, either an economic runaway, such as trade, or a military runaway, such as a player with two kills and subsequently an additional 100 population. The colluding must occur in the in-game chat. In 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 the so basically the, the, this is preventing people from colluding for small things, right? Like if I said, "Hey, uh, you know, John, John's between us, and if we don't kill him, uh, we're, we're going to get bogged down. Let's kill him." Well, that's that's that is not not an acceptable collusion there. Even though there there's technically a mutual threat, um, there there needs to be a tangible mutual threat. And a sacred site victory is obviously a lot more tangible or wonder victory uh, is a lot more tangible than oh this guy spawned relatively close to us, let's team up and kill him. Um, and that's probably something that should be clarified in here. So I will make sure that I I go and update collusion just to give a little bit more uh, of a, a specific um, example in here, but uh, I, I don't I don't want people being like, oh, well, this guy spawned between us, bad luck, and we, we 2v1'd him. Uh, if, if it occurs naturally, then it occurs naturally, but I don't want them calling it out in chat saying saying that. 
Um, and it, it's hard, right? Where do you draw the line? Uh, it, can, it can be difficult to police. Uh, so desyncs, obviously, uh, the elephant in the room desyncs, we're very scared of them happening. Uh, in the event that a desync happens, um, it, it, the, I, I'm not happy with, with how this goes, but I'm not happy with desyncs. But if a desync happens, I'm pretty much just going to... Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. It, it, it's... Uh, look, in the event a desync occurs before 20 minutes, the remaining players left at the point of the desync exit the game and enter a new lobby. So that means if there's eight players left and two of them got eliminated and then, you know, one of them gets desynced, so now you're down to five players, then those six players, including the one that got desynced, go back and then they begin a game uh, with the remaining players on the same sieves. And all, all the eliminations that occurred prior to that still receive score. So those two people who got eliminated, uh, they're, they're out. That's it. They're not going to go in game number two of, of before the desync. Um, but uh, th those points will count uh, for anybody who, d who did eliminate them. Um, in the event that the desync occurs after 20 minutes, the game will continue without the desynced players, with their kings no longer worth elimination points, um, unless the admin decides that the king was in play. So let's say that, you know, there's, there's five people left, 20 minutes remaining, and uh, one of those person people are getting attacked, and then that person desyncs, and now the king, if it's still in play, like if that person w was being attacked and, you know, was probably going to be losing their king, then technically their king was in play, and therefore we may award a point uh, in the event that their king is eliminated, even though they're desynced. Um, so the admin reserves the right to determine if consolation points are awarded to a desynced player. So say, for example, you've got three people left. Uh, one of them is um, going for a wonder victory. Three minutes left to the wonder. It's looking like it's probably going to go their way, uh, but everybody's just chilling. And then a desync happens at an hour and 35 minutes into the game. The admin reserves the right to say, actually, we're pretty satisfied that Puppy Paw was going to win that game. We're happy to give him the four points. Um, and look, at the end of the day, the desync happened and it means that you know, the, the Wonder Victory didn't happen. A Marine Lord technically won because he beat uh, the Viper. Um, so we, we'll give... Look, Marine Lord can, can have the points for the victory, but we'll also give the points over to Puppy Paw because of the desync. Because at the end of the day, the desync isn't any fault of the player. Um, so, yeah, but it, it, it's very frustrating, right? Because the, as an example, we casted a game just a, a day or two ago where Core disconnected, or sorry, desynced rather, I should say. Uh, and he, he wasn't in a dominant position, but he was in a good position. He was in a game-winning position. Uh, if you play these cards right, but it wasn't dominant. So that's the difference, you know, and it sucks, right? Don't get me wrong. It, it feels absolutely terrible, but I, I don't want to just be giving out points like, oh, you, you're decent. Oh, here, have some points. It's like, points are hard to come by, man. Like, not everybody's going to be getting points. So yeah, uh, that's that's something that we've we've tried to be pretty careful with. Um, and any player who desyncs is required to send a screenshot of the desync message to the tournament admin, uh, just because we don't want people alt f and being like, oh, I desynced. Oh, look at that. And then, oh, wait, we're going to remake, guys. It's, yeah, no. Uh, king donation. Intentionally moving your king to a location where a known enemy threat or presence is, especially when under attack by a different player, is banned. The admin reserves the right to issue penalty. Issue penalty? Issue penalty? Issue penalty? Uh, deemed in breach of this rule. Uh, the admin reserves the right to issue penalty. That that does not. That is that is not appropriate English. I, I obviously didn't check this before I published it. Sorry to everyone who has to read my terrible English. Um, so the admin reserves the right to issue a penalty uh, when someone is deemed in breach of this rule. So basically, this is just to prevent people from like, let's say you're under attack, and in spite of that person, you intentionally just go run your king to somebody's keep. We don't want that. You can still, like, you can still run away with your king. That's fine. Even if an enemy is in a direction, like, feel free to run in that direction. But if you know that there's a Barbican that's got a cannon emplacement and you send your king directly to that Barbican and you lose your king, that's going... That's 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 not cricket, mate. That's not cricket. Anyway, lobby configuration. It's not too important. You don't really need to worry about that. Maps, four maps, Great Barrier Reef, Uluru, Blue Mountains, Tasmania. First two... or The, the first week, we're going to be playing on two maps, Uluru and Tasmania. The last two maps, Great Barrier Reef and Blue Mountains, uh, should be in next week. Um, we hopefully will have them in ready. Uh, it's, it's been a bit of a grind, uh, so it is uh, it is going to take some time, but hopefully we'll have them in. Um, to just to explain the maps briefly for you, Tasmania, uh, it is a an island map, water around the edges, lots of resources in the very middle of the map, uh, especially a lot of sheep. Uluru, uh, think of like King of the Hill, except for the hill being a really flat plateau. Uh, and there's absolutely no, um, it's, it's very hard to wall on that plateau, uh, just simply because it's, it's, it's like the great plains up there. It, it is, it is very open. Um, so th there's that. Blue Mountains, very interesting map. I'm not sure, um, how much the players will like it. I think, uh, viewers will probably like this map. A lot of forests, 
a lot of sacred sites. And when I say a lot of sacred sites, I'm talking more than you've ever seen before. I'm like, I'm doing the Donald Trump, putting my finger on my thumb and I'm moving my hand to the side. I'm like, I think I think there are, there are more sacred sites on this map than Dry Arabia, Lipany, and Black Forest combined. There's no, there's no actually no sacred sites on Black Forest. At least then there isn't, there, there wasn't at some point, there may be again. Anyway, and Great Barrier Reef. So my initial direction uh, for this map has, has we, we, we've gotten rid of that and we've changed it up a little bit. So basically it, it's going to work like a map uh, with migration. So basically all players will start off on a small island, uh, on the same smaller island, and they will have the choice of migrating over to a larger island uh, where there's more resources. So once again, it is a, it's a water map, but at the same time, it's not really, it's it's a land map, but there's water around the edges. It, it doesn't really run through the middle of the map. So you can choose to ignore water or you can choose not to, but it is another interesting style of map, which I'm sure will be quite good. Uh, but finals, we're still not 100% sure exactly how the finals are going to go down. So this is to be determined. And that is it. So that's the handbook. Those are the players. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Uh, 15 GMT, Saturday and Sunday. 11 a.m. Eastern uh, for all you Americans out there. Saturday and Sunday. So come over. Join us on Twitch. I'll be over there. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Anyway, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.